another video from Fast Tech. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to disassemble a PS4 CUH1001. This is also known as a CUH1000. In other countries, the most important thing to look out for are the two numbers after CUH. So if your system's model number starts with a CUH10 and the model number is present at the back here, you can check at the back right above this barcode. This is the serial number, that's the model number. And if yours starts with a CUH10, this video applies to you. So I'm gonna be disassembling this PS4 and showing you guys how to replace each component in this PS4 when it eventually fails. This video is brought to you by the FastTech Pro Auto Kit, which is an automatic screwdriver toolkit we're gonna to be using to disassemble this PS4. Links in the description box. The first thing I'm gonna be showing you guys how to replace is the hard drive. And this is the easiest thing to replace in a PS4. If you're getting the PS4 cannot start error, or if your PS4 is not loading games even off the hard drive, you could have a defective hard drive, and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to replace that. All you gotta do is lift this cover up like that. We're gonna remove this Phillips screw. And once the screw is removed, we're gonna be able to pull the hard drive out like this. And this is a 500 gigabyte right here. You can upgrade it to one terabyte, two terabyte, five terabytes. Uh, and we also sell SSDs on our website. If you're interested, I'll put the links in the description box. To get the hard drive out of its enclosure, we're gonna remove these four Phillips screws. Once we've got the screws off, the hard drive's gonna come out of its enclosure. And that's what the PS4 hard drives look like. This one's an HGST full of dust. I'm expecting there to be a lot more dust and the heat sink of the system and this will be a good opportunity to show you guys how to fix the PS4 is too hot error message. Stay tuned. Now we're gonna disassemble the rest of the PS4 and to proceed, we're gonna remove these two warranty stickers and these two stickers at the back. Now, this video is being recorded in 2021, so none of these PS4s have any warranty left, but normally these would be considered the warranty stickers with United States being the only exception to this case because of an FTC ruling that states that if a manufacturer voids your warranty because you disassembled your console, they have to give you a reason why. So we're gonna remove these warranty stickers. Now you're gonna see four Torx T8H screws and that's not a standard T8. So you need a T8H, like the one that's included in our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit. Note that there is a security bit in the screw and there's a hole in the driver. And that's why I mentioned that a regular T8 is not gonna work. Again, links in the description box for the kit. So now we're gonna switch to our Torx T8H bit. And we're gonna remove these screws. Once we've got those screws removed, we can remove the bottom cover by lifting it up from the sides like this, and it's gonna come off. As you can see, just like I predicted, there's a lot of dust in the system, and there's gonna be even more in the heat sink. The first thing I'm gonna show you guys how to replace here is the power supply, because these are a very common point of failure. So if your PS4 is not turning on at all, that means there's no power, no beep at the front, no light when you press the power button you need a new power supply. And we sell these on our website as well. Link's gonna be in the description box as always. We're gonna remove the three Torx T8 screws. And then we're gonna switch. And then we're gonna switch to our Phillips bit. And we're gonna remove the Phillips screws. Now we're gonna remove this connector on the right side by pulling it out. And then we're gonna lift up the power supply like this. And the power supply model number here is an ADP240AR. That's the power supply you'll find in North American first gen PS4s. The very first ones like this one is CUH100001 series. 
If you're watching this in Europe or Asia, your power supply is gonna start with a model N16 or N15. And the power supplies are interchangeable. So if you order one from us, you, you are gonna be able to use it because these power supplies do 110 and 220. This one goes 100 to 240, but it should work in Asia, Europe, United States, or Canada. Again, links in the description box. Next thing I'm gonna show you guys how to remove is the antenna. This is the antenna right here, and this is responsible for controller transmissions and also your Wi-Fi signals. So if your PS4 is not picking up any Wi-Fi, or if you have to stand really close to your PS4 for the controller to connect, you need to replace this antenna. There's one single Torx T8H screw that holds it in. We're gonna switch to our T8 bit again, and we're gonna remove this piece. And we're gonna lift it out. There's a cable that connects here. We're gonna lift it up, unroute the cable, and that's our antenna right there. There's a lot of dust on it. Uh, I'm not gonna bother cleaning this because this system is not going back together because we need it for a motherboard order we got from our customer. So that's why the system's getting disassembled. So anyways, that's the antenna right there. Normally what happens is the solder connection right here breaks. So if you are able to fix this connection, you can fix your own antenna, but if you're not able to, links in the description box if you wanna buy one. Next, we're gonna remove the disk drive and there's a few cables that connect it. There's a ribbon cable here that we're gonna have to remove. There's a clip we have to push down and then we can pull the cable out like that. Another clip here we're gonna push down and then pull the cable out and it should come out. If you do this properly, the cable is not gonna break, but if you don't push the clip down like I did, you're gonna break this cable. And if you do break this cable, links in the description box. Now we're gonna remove the power cable for the disk drive. Pull it out of the connector here. That's the power cable. Now we're gonna remove the T8 screws that hold it in and also the single Phillips at the front. Now we're gonna be able to simply lift this disc drive out like that. Lots of times these rollers come misaligned. So if your PS4 is not accepting any discs, most likely because you put two or more discs in there or if you have a child and they stuck something in there, normally these rollers come misaligned. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to remove these three Phillips screws, align these rollers, remove whatever's in the disc drive and put it all back together. If you have to replace the disc drive completely, please note that you have to put this logic board into the new disc drive. If you don't put your old logic board in your new disk drive, your PS4 is not going to read disks off that disk drive. This is very important because each logic board is paired to the motherboard that it came with from the factory. If you're interested in buying one of these disk drives, we do sell them on our website. Next, we're gonna flip the device over and we're gonna remove the Torx T8 screws that hold this side of the case on. Now we're gonna be able to lift this piece of the case from the front and it's gonna come right off. Now we have to remove the rest of these T8 screws and these two Phillips screws to get to the motherboard. Now we're gonna remove this fan connector by lifting it up. Pay attention to this, guys. We're gonna lift it up. Not outwards, but up. Now we're gonna remove this back plate. It's gonna come right off. The thermal pads are not in the best shape, which is understandable. This system is now eight years old. It feels like yesterday when these came out. And now they're obsolete. Well, not entirely obsolete. Matter of fact, most of the games that you would want to play are still out on PlayStation 4 and not on PlayStation 5. But I digress. So at this point, we're going to be able to lift the motherboard out like this. 
And it's gonna come right out. This is a model SAA001. We sell these on our website. And matter of fact, that's why we're disassembling the system. As soon as I'm done with this video, I'm gonna clean this board up and ship it out to a customer along with a matching logic board from this disk drive. Because as I mentioned earlier, these have to be paired. If it's not paired with the logic board that it came with, this motherboard's not gonna be able to read disks. That's very important. So take note of that, guys. This Bluetooth chip right here, that's a very common point of failure. These fail quite frequently. And I'm sure if you guys are in the service business, and not watching this to repair your own system, you know that these HDMI ports fail like crazy. This one looks like it's in good shape, but these are very easy to break. And there's a Panasonic chip right under this plate, which also fails and causes video output issues. So those are some of the common faults of these systems. And not to mention the now expiring CMOS batteries that eventually you guys will have to replace. I'll show you guys how to replace these because if you're getting that CE error that's going around these days because these batteries have started to expire, how you replace it is very simple. First, you order one of these batteries from our store at fasttechstore.com. Very important part of the step. Second part of the step is we're gonna use a knife to pull this clip and then we're gonna be able to lift this battery out once this clip is disengaged, like that, and the battery comes out. And once you get the new battery, you put it in the same way you took it out. This side goes in first, and then release the clip. Now I'm gonna be showing you guys how to fix the PS4 is too hot error message which is a very common issue, and everybody seems to miss this part. I was the first one to show you guys how to fix this on YouTube, and those videos combined have about two to three million views. So thank you guys for that. I'm gonna be doing it once again for people who weren't paying attention before. We're gonna be removing these three screws. Once these three screws are out, we're gonna lift up this heat sink and there's gonna be a ton of dust here. Actually, I'm surprised there's not that much. There's more than this that I was expecting, but even if you have this much, you should definitely clean this out because eventually, eventually it's gonna become a lot. On a system that's normally that dusty, you would see at least half of the heat sink completely blocked but that's not the case here. But if you are getting the PS4 is too hot error message and your system shuts off, or if you get a blue screen for a few seconds and then it shuts off, it most likely is due to this heatsink and the dust buildup in here. And if you're in here, you should also replace the thermal paste, which we also sell on our website at fasttechstore.com. Links in the description box. And sometimes you might also have a fan failure, but this one looks in good shape, minus the fact that it's filthy. So what you wanna do is blow it out with a compressed air can, which, you, which you're gonna buy at fasttechstore.com. Get that heat sink out of the way. And now we're gonna remove the fan. There's two screws that hold it in. And out comes the fan. So the fan is the most difficult thing to replace because you have to get through everything to get to the fan. Again, links in the description box. If your fan fails, you can use the coupon code YouTube, not just for this fan, but for any of the parts that you saw in this PlayStation. You can use that coupon code to get a 5% discount on any purchase from fasttechstore.com. And with the fan being removed from the system, that's the last component that we can take out. Another video from Fast Tech, guys. Don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe to my vlog channel in which I travel the world and I record my adventures. Follow me on Instagram. This is Young Tech God from Fast Tech, signing out.